Hi everyone, happy Thor's Day. Uh, first off, I just want to apologize about the lack of video last Thursday. I had a video all ready to go, but I had some personal things come up. I had to deal with that and then trying to get all the editing done. It was a really rushed job and we didn't want to just put it out like that. We didn't want to just throw out a crappy ass video. We want to make, you know, really good videos for you guys. So we figured it's just best to hold off. But for today, you asked for updates. Updates is what you're going to get. We have the Witch's Brew and the Phoenix Blood. First, we're going to start off with the Witch's Brew. I, I racked it off the lease, and now we're going to do a gravity reading and a little tasting. So, we'll get gravity reading. So, it's at about 1.006, which is great. So, I'm just going to put this back on. And we'll give it a taste. So it is a little cloudy, of course. We're gonna let this sit and it will clear. Um, for now, there's a lot of different smells with this. Uh, the cran it, honestly, it smells like Christmas. And in my past experience with herbs and stuff in your meads, I find they take a little bit longer for the whole, for all the flavors to really come out. Uh, the last time I made this, you couldn't really taste much of the cranberry until about six months, and it just develops more and more. It didn't make it to the year mark because honestly, I drank it all. It it was really good. I know you guys were kind of hesitant about the pine, but it actually adds a really nice earthiness to this meat. So, here we go. Yep, you can taste the cranberries more this time. That's mainly because I added more this time than I, I did last time, but. It still tastes really young, of course. We, I forget what day we started brewing this on, but I think this is gonna be fantastic. The sweetness is perfect for me. It's not too dry, it's not overly sweet. I'm not a huge sweet meat person, but I think I, I don't know, I really like this. Yep. I'm gonna finish this. And we're gonna move this off to the side for now. And like I said, we're just gonna let it sit now for a while and let it clear. We'll see if anything changes. I have a feeling it won't though. Everything kinda petered out at the end. But we have our gravity reading. I'll take some notes. And yeah, we're just gonna let it sit. All right, on to our Phoenix blood. So this is really slowed down. We're going to take a quick gravity reading. Just to see where it's sitting at. You can really smell those jalapenos. Uh, let's get this. So this is at 1.000 which is fantastic. So I'm gonna remove the cherries and the jalapenos and we're gonna transfer this over into another bucket because remember with the cherries and the jalapenos, I wanna kind of tone that down with some cacao nibs. I'm gonna remove the fruit. And this is why I love these bags, because I can simply gently lift it. I don't want to disturb that lease too much. 
this is another point that Bo and I disagree on. I don't like to use bags, putting fruit in bags and stuff. I would rather put all the fruit and whatever straight into the mead and then rack the mead off whenever I don't want the fruit in there anymore. Now, this is not criticism on Bo's method. It's just my preference. And now that I think about it, his way of doing things is probably better than my way. And it's as simple as that. Wash my hands. Let me grab another bucket and a chair to put it on. So let's grab our auto siphon. Oops. It's simply just an open end on this end. Move it down because I don't want to incorporate too much air. Just gonna gently stick that in. And just a couple of pumps. It's flowing. For those of you that are first timers and seeing this, uh, this is all gravity fed, so I have one bucket lower than the other, and it just basically sucks it up, runs it down, no air gets incorporated, or minimal air gets incorporated, and I can kind of control how much of that lease goes in just by covering it up, or keeping it just above that lease so it doesn't get sucked up. Obviously, you might suck up some right now, but that's okay, I'm getting it off the bulk of it. It's gonna sit for longer with those cacao nibs and I think it's gonna turn out beautiful. It's kind of looking like with the juice from all the cherries and everything, I got a little bit more than one gallon, which is fine. This is usually where you wanna drink close by. Almost done. Put this over here to wash later. All right. I guess I should take a little sip of this too. Try it out, right? That is a very rich red color. Oh, that smells like it's got a lot of heat. Oh yeah, you can't really taste the, the spiciness at first, but you get it along on that back end. That's not nearly as spicy as it was the first time I made this, which is good. So I've never used cacao nibs before, and as the wonderful Ida told us, cacao nibs can also symbolize Immortality. Remember, we had all the symbolisms in here for the phoenix. So we're going to add more immortality to the immortality of the cherries. Through my research, I found out that normally you want to toast them first. So I did that earlier. I'm doing four ounces of cacao nibs. I don't think this is overly much just because of that heat because we want to kind of curb that heat. We won't still want to taste it, but just want to downplay it a little bit and add, you know, another, another layer of flavor. So I toasted these. My house smells like chocolate brownies now. I'm going to leave this in the bucket. I sanitize my bag. They're all in here. And I'm just going to simply put them in. It's as simple as that. I'm going to check this in a couple of days and I'll take samples along the way and when I kind of get to that level where I feel like that, that chocolate really infused in there I'll simply pull this out and probably rack it into a carboy to let it sit and clear. We'll wait at that point I'll do another update and we'll see if I'm gonna back sweeten it at all but we'll see how these cacao nibs play out first. So we'll just slap our lid on from the other bucket. Please remember that everything has been sanitized beforehand in Star Sand. I've got my blue bucket. I'm sure you can see it here. 
And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys click the like button. It really helps the channels. Also subscribe. We have videos coming out every Thursday and every Saturday where we cover, you know, brewing tips and tricks, recipes, we'll do updates, and just some mead knowledge. We are huge mead enthusiasts, and if you want to really talk to us, we love talking with you guys, so definitely go check out the Discord server. Uh, the link's below.